Hang on, man. Today, the the first Sunday after the the feast of the Pentecost that we have celebrated last week, and it can be easily recognized that the readings are mainly about the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go through the, the, all the readings quickly to see how the Holy Spirit was mentioned and, and uh, the, His work was, was recognized in these readings. In the reading of St. Paul from the, Romans, from the Romans, he say, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So there is a power of the Holy Spirit that grants us peace, joy, and hope. In the reading from the first epistle of St. Peter, he says, um, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to, those, to many people, elect according to the knowledge of God the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is perceived as granting us sanctification, holiness. If you are called to be holy as our Father is holy, so we can see here, uh, we can see here that, that sanctification and holiness is given, is a gift by the Holy Spirit. And then on, in the reading from the Proxus, the, the book of Acts, we see how the church was led in the apostolic age and throughout the, all, all the ages. It, the church was led by the Holy Spirit. And we see in uh, chapter 13 from the book of Acts, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work who, who, which I have called them. I'm, I'm going to take it back a little bit. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, and by the way, ministered, the word, the Greek word for ministered is the same word of liturgy. They were praying liturgy. So as they ministered, they prayed liturgy to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, so the work of the Holy Spirit was very explicit. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So it's very clear that the Holy Spirit is the, the main focus of the readings of today. The most important one, and, and as you know that always the, the gospel is the center of the readings. We see the, the verse that I think we memorized it since we were little kids. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and to whom who knocks, it will be opened. I think we know this verse by heart. But there is a problem with this verse, because it promotes, it triggers in, in each one of us a hope. If someone is, is telling you, ask for anything, you'll be given it. What you're going to do? You're expecting something. And if you trust that person and he's powerful and mighty enough to be able to hold his promise, then you will think, what do you really need? And you will start asking that thing from that person. And you are expecting that you're going to get what you are asking for. Sometimes this verse is triggering in us the, the things of the earth because this is what we sometimes or in many cases this is what we are really need or we think we really need. We, re we need the earthly things. We need money. We need possessions. We need achievements. And when we read this verse, we say, okay, then God is promising us if we ask anything. But we need to take it, put it into context. So for everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to whom who knocks, it will be opened. 
If a son asks for bread to make it more clear, to give more evidence to that, he's saying, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? An exclamation mark, which means it can't. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Again, exclamation mark. Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much? How much more will your heavenly father give what? I mean, you see the analogy, if you are, we are as parents, we are giving the best gifts we can for our children. How much God will give what? There should be something big. And could it be all the positions I'm asking for? All the achievements I'm expecting? All the, um, the money I want? But actually he is saying, how, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And I think now we are disappointed because we are not given the money. The verse doesn't apply to money and positions. It applies to something, ah, we don't think that's exactly what we need. The problem with speaking of the Holy Spirit, especially living in a very materialistic society and culture, it's a big challenge. I had a discussion with a discussion about money. And there is fellows, young or old, they believe in money. They believe in money. And let's be frank, we all believe in money in a way. Maybe not from an evil intention all the time. Some, they believe in money. That's very clear for them. And some people, because we are caught up in money talks, we need to pray for the mortgage. We, we need to pray for the rent of our place. We need to pay for the, the installments for the property taxes. I, I, and I can list a long list. You know it all. Hmm? You're, we are all suffering from this list, right? And because we are caught on that, this is what fills our minds. And the more we feel we need more, and we are short of money, whether to sustain the basic needs or to have the more we are asking for, we become caught in the idea of the money is important. The material things are important. And we are very much caught on that. But when we read a passage like this, it's totally different. How can we live in between these two worlds? The world of the Bible, the church, the language we are used to hear from this place. Whoever is dressing like me and talking, he's going to say something along the same lines. But as soon as we go out, we talk about other stuff. How can we live in between these two worlds? And again, some people, they believe in money. I mean, young fellows, their first, they encounter money as, um, as early as, as their little children. But I think a big point when they start to plan for college, and they, they started to be exposed to loans, scholarships, which college is going to give me more money. And, and I, that's a burden. An early burden the young fellows start to, to take as early as, as 18 years old or around that. So again, how, how should we believe? I think we should believe this world. But again, the problem will be, what should we do to believe in this world? And why do we believe in this world? Let's answer the, the question why first. We believe in this world because this is a true promise. This is a true promise 
But the problem is, it is a little bit invisible. It is unseen. And we love to see things, even though the things we see, which we see, I, I'll give you an example. I think most of us had a new car. And a new car, it doesn't mean a brand new car. I might get a used car, but I'm buying a car expecting that, that it's going to help me go from point A to point B. Or I'm going to, because it has a lot of options that makes me comfortable and happy. And sometimes we got that car, the car we wanted to have, to possess. And what about after two months, after one year, after four years, you're thinking to change it, right? The promise is not fulfilled. You start another one, and you need more money, and so forth. But the promise of eternal life, eternal, eternal means something that will never end. Our problem is with things that are finishing, that per perishing. But the promise of the, 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 the gospel is never ending, is eternal, is eternal. Why uh, aren't we accepting that? I know that this language that I'm, I'm talking, I mean, many of the youth, they are speaking to each other. Because this is not the, the language that pleases them. This is not the language. Why? Because we want things that are seen. Even the language, my sermon, is not practical, is not relevant. And it is not. Based on this world, it is not, and it won't be. And I hope it is not. Because if it is very relevant to this world, then we are alienated from this world, the world of the Bible, the world of the Spirit. A great quote that I came across from St. Macarius. St. Macarius is saying, whatever the soul may think fit to do, it, to it, to do itself, in any way, even spiritually, if I think that I'm going to save myself, if I think that I'll, I'll be pure, I'll be a good person, whatever the soul may think fit to do to itself, whatever care and pains it may take, relying only upon its own power and thinking to be able to effect a perfect success by itself. And again, success. We are all pursuing success all kinds of successes. We are pursuing that. So I'm thinking to be able to effect a perfect success by itself. Without the cooperation of the Spirit, it is greatly mistaken. It is greatly mistaken. We cannot achieve anything without the Holy Spirit. Definitely, not as far as degrees. Not as far as, because we are someone smart, he can, he, is, he will be able to get degrees and many degrees. But this is not, this is not the feeling of someone who is Christian and, and spiritual, who believes that everything he do and even his gifts, his intelligence is a gift from God. And it, any success he or she achieves is, is with the cooperation of God. That God, that's why God is in the center. We need money. We need money. I'm saying what I'm saying, but at the end of, by the end of the month, I'm paying my mortgage. But it is not what we believe in. This is the main shift I hope we can get from this, from this talk. We need to remind ourselves that we don't believe in material things. We believe only in God. We need material things because that's how. I mean, I'm not going to go to a car dealer and tell him I'm going to give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit and he's going to give me a car. But I should be believing that only God is the one whom I need. I need the Holy Spirit and, and his work in me. So again, and thinking to be able to effect a perfect success by itself without the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, it is greatly mistaken. 
It is of no use for the heavenly places. So the heavenly places are what count. It is of no use for the heavenly places. It is of no use for the kingdom, that soul, which supposes that it can achieve perfect purity of itself and by itself alone without the spirit. Unless the man who is under the influence of the passions will come to God. We are all under the influence of passions. Earthly passions. What should we do? We need to come wholeheartedly to God. And maybe we can tell him. We are believing in money. We were caught in this, this deceit. That we, we believe in money. Or we believed in money. But we, we are no longer want to believe in money. We want to believe in you. Help us. And this, here comes the, the, Holy, the work of the Holy Spirit who can make a change, who can make a transform, transformation. That's why we believe in the work of the Holy Spirit, a real powerful work. The problem is that it is mystic. Mystic means from mystery. It's unseen. As exactly like our sacraments. Our sacraments, why they are called sacraments? Because we take a power, a grace, but not seen. It is unseen. And this is a challenge. But we are equipped with the Holy Spirit to perceive those unseen things if we are not caught up so much in the visible things. The more we are attached to the visible things, we become alienated from those things. So again, He's saying, which supposes that it can achieve perfect purity of itself and by itself alone without the spirit. Unless the man who is under the influence of the passions will come to God, denying the world, not believing in it. And this is the main thing. Denying the world and will believe with patience. We need patience. It's not easy. We, need, we are in a very, very fast, we eat, we eat fast food. We do everything very quickly. We are we're thinking of time management, although we are wasting time in many things. But we are talking about time management, time. And time is money, right? That's why it's very precious, because it is money. Not because anything else. Not because it's going to lead me to an eternal life, but because it's very precious because time is money. I think this is a big slogan here. Denying the world and will believe with patience and hope to receive a good thing foreign to his own nature. The problem, our corrupted nature become, became very sensual, became very uh, attached to material things, things we touch, things we see. Everything we can perceive by our senses, we believe in it. Other than that, and there is a lot of naturalistic thoughts saying you, what you see is what exists. What you don't see does not exist. Which is not true. Which is not true. That's why spirit, by the way, linguistically, spirit in the, the, the Greek language, in the Hebrew language, spirit and wind are the same word. In the, and the Coptic as well. Pnevma, or the, the Greek pneuma, which, from which came the word pneumatic. And in the, the Arabic, and I think in the Hebrew, it's close to the Arabic. Ruach, ruh, in Arabic. It all means whether wind or spirit. Something that we cannot see and touch. But it's powerful. We are able from the wind to generate power, right? There is generators that generate electric power from the wind. We, we believe in that because we can, we can see the, or, or at least perceive the electric power that comes of, out of a generator. But it is driven by the wind. Why don't we believe that the Holy Spirit is much, much more powerful? Anyway, so again, and unless the Lord... And will believe with patience and hope to receive a good thing foreign to his own nature, namely the power of the Holy Spirit. And unless the Lord shall drop upon the soul from on high the life of the Godhead, 
such a man will never experience true life. And I think that's why we are living sometimes in, in a big deceit. We are deceived by this world. It's giving, giving us promises, but they are not true. Promises of happiness. Again, I, I mentioned that many times before, but I'm going to repeat it again. All the advertisement are giving us a promise. You're going to happy you're going to be happier if you use our product you're going to be more beautiful you're going to be uh, more more uh, enjoyable you're going to be more accepted if you use our products it's not true all the products are all the advertisement are giving us that promise and this is not true but true life as St. Macarius is saying, such a man will never experience true life, will never recover from the drunkenness of materialism. St. Macarius is from the 4th century, is talking about materialism. We invite him to come to the 21st. I don't know what he, what he might say. What he might say. In the 21st century, in the 4th century, he was talking about materialism. And the 21st century would be very much different for him. Anyway, so we'll never recover from the drunkenness of materialism. The enlightenment of the spirit will never shine in that benighted soul, darkened soul. Definitely what I'm saying is irrelevant. Definitely what I'm saying is alien to us. Definitely what I'm saying is boring because it's about truth that we don't see, but it is the, the real, the real. The problem with what we see, sometimes it is, the promise it gives is not real. The things we can touch, I'm using this phone, is giving a promise. It's taking for so much time from our lives, but it is not the, the one that gives happiness. Two years or less, the, the one and the newer one will show up and we're gonna see a long line waiting in front of apps Apple store waiting to get the newer one with the new promise with the new uh, happiness that it grants and it is not true anyway so the enlightenment of the spirit will never shine in that benighted soul or kindle in it a holy daytime it will never awake out of that deepest sleep of ignorance and so come to know God of a truth through God's power and the efficacy of grace. The efficacy. There is efficacy of grace. Okay. What should we do? I'll try to be relevant now. What should we do? We need to, one, I'm going to say three things. We need to Search ourselves and examine ourselves. Where do we believe? What do we believe? We all have some kind of belief in money and possessions. Let's, let's face it. Let's admit it. But how much? And if it is too much, then we need to, number two, pray. Pray to God and ask Him. Especially we know that there is an efficacy of the grace and efficacy of the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit and, and invite Him to work in us to make us alienated from this world to belong to, this, to the word of the Bible to the word of the church to the word of the sacraments to the word of the mysteries of God so we need to believe or to shift our belief or our beliefs number two we need to pray we need to pray number three we need not to surrender to sin because the more we surrender and again the problem is not falling in sin the problem is surrendering to sin we fall in sin we are weak but we never surrender to sin because whenever we surrender to sin our souls become darkened and the, 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 the talk about the Holy Spirit and, and His work becomes so far, becomes so alienated. 
so we need to believe, we need to pray, and we need to struggle against our sin. And glory be to God forever. Oh,